In this video, we're going to make another circuit with the LM358, a dual op amp, and we have it on the board here. We're only going to use a 5 volt power supply because this works uh, pretty decently with a 5 volt power supply. The pin layout is pretty simple. So, as we said before, it is a dual op amp. We have the output, inverting input, non inverting input there. So, output, negative symbol on schematics, positive symbol on schematics. Output, inverting input, non inverting input. So we could build the same circuit that we build there over here and vice versa or uh, connect the two together if we want. So to begin with, with this circuit we're going to build a non inverting comparator with hysteresis. So first we need a voltage. We're going to set half of the power supply voltage. So 2.5 volts approximately to uh, this pin here we're going to use a voltage divider with fixed resistors right there so the input has just a ton of impedance it really limits uh, practically all current from flowing through it in other words it doesn't let any current through it theoretically a tiny trickle gets through but uh, for the most part none gets through so it doesn't affect the uh, voltage at that point for the most part let's do the output now so we're going to light an LED this output does not get up to the positive rail. It falls a fair bit short of that, but it does go down to the negative rail. So to turn the LED completely off when the output is low, because that can go down to a zero volts, we need to wire it in this direction. So long lead the anode to the output, short lead the cathode of the LED up one row right there, and we are going to protect it with a 220 ohm resistor which is a little bit more than resistance than you need to protect an LED from 5 volts and as I said before that's going to go to the negative rail so the LED will light up when the output is uh, more positive by at least uh, 1.6 volts but uh, this is a comparator circuit it saturates it turns on or off completely and uh, it turns on to about uh, 3.5 volts in that range I don't remember the exact value so we have this trim pot here I can adjust the voltage and now we set that to the non inverting input so that's the input we're changing and uh, the other one is the uh, fixed one so we'll turn the power on and the LED is off right now that means the output is low it's down to the negative rail because the trim pot since we set the voltage halfway across the uh, power supply rails there 100 kilo ohms and then 100 kilo ohms we need to put about 5 kilo ohms and then 5 kilo ohms for the output to change states we will turn it this way try not to block the LED you can see we get about halfway the LED turns on go down a little bit the LED turns off so there's a very fine point some of this is just the uh, mechanical movement before the wiper starts moving. So with uh, this circuit, let's move this jumper over a little bit right there. With uh, this circuit, what we're going to do is add another resistor for the hysteresis. So I'm going to take a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. The exact value does not matter. I tried a few different values and this one I, I liked uh, the best. So you can go higher or uh, even lower and uh, test it out see what you like the best so we're going to put that to the output and then to the non-inverting input and uh, yep looks like you can see that pretty good I was looking at the board when I was positioning it there we go had to wiggle it a little bit so there we go so the LED is on we have a high output that means we know for sure we have to turn this trim pot down so still it's a comparator but now, when we turn it down, now you see the LED went off. I'm going to turn it, and you can see i got to turn it quite a bit farther before the LED will come on, and then it stays on for quite a bit, turning it down. So we added a range, more range, that we have to turn this from pretty much a uh, very fine point to a uh, fair amount of uh, movement here. 
to uh, get the LED on and off. So now, simply looking at the LED lighting up and turning off is nice and all, but it's much better to actually see the voltage in real time. So I have this uh, pocket oscilloscope here. It's really, really easy to use uh, once you know how to use the buttons. Basically, you press them once to make a change, and you can hold it down for a little bit. That will help make another change. It has a dial for making changes, and you push the button to the dial it makes it so it changes faster so in any case pretty simple to use it has the uh, cable that comes out here to these alligator clips and they leave enough room on the jumpers to uh, if you clip them to the jumper at the very top where it kind of holds it in place so in any case I like this setup I use it a lot right there so we can either measure the uh, trim pot there directly or over here because as you can see we got the voltage there at the trim pot. Of course, up here, there's a jumper that brings it there. So we will have pretty much exactly the same voltage. If you get real, real picky, there might be just a speck of difference because there is a little bit of resistance in the wire. But in any case, there you can see, the LED is off. So we know we have to turn the voltage of the trim pot up. And so it's a comparator, non-inverting comparator. Right now it's low. So the voltage at the trim pot is lower than what we need to turn the LED on, which is the opposite state. So we will turn it up, watch the line on the oscilloscope, and unfortunately the board kind of pushes out these uh, trim pots here. So let's start over there. It's really pushing it out. There we go. Alright, let's try that again. So, now the output is high. Let's go low. And there you can see, it turned off. Now I'll turn it up. And I gotta turn it a while before it goes high. But you can see that we get to the same point where it switches states. But, when it switches states, when we're going down, it gives a sudden drop. That's because we have this resistor that is at the output when the output goes low pulls the voltage down at that pin and uh, so we set the voltage with the trim pot but now it's pulling it down even more right there and then we raise the voltage until it's high enough to set the output high now you see a spike where it goes up because we have voltage now a higher voltage being fed to the non-inverting input and so what it is doing is it is providing some of the output to the input so that it makes the input more like the output until you break that barrier where it overwhelms that extra uh, feedback and you get the opposite direction right there you can see that like that now let's look at it quickly without the positive feedback so that's what this is positive feedback so it's positive, it, the uh, power supply kind of lost connection for a little bit, so there you go. I think uh, when I bump them, because I move stuff around a lot, I think I start making the uh, connection to the barrel plug looser. But in any case, there you can see the voltage will go up a little bit, the LED turns on, down a little bit. You can see I don't really have any room other than kind of moving the trim pot a little further than I should for it to be on and off. It's pretty much an exact spot. And uh, we probably would if we uh, did this carefully. Find that at uh, pretty much the exact same spot it turns on and off. That is without the uh, positive feedback. So that's why you might want to use that. If you want to make it so you definitely have to be you know relatively close to in this case the positive rail or relatively close to the negative rail before it will change states you don't want if you don't want a kind of middle ground uh, where it will just like this barely have to change the voltage and it just keeps rapidly changing state if you have something that's kind of wavering and you don't want that you want it to have to uh, definitely be you know a bit low and then definitely be a bit high before it changes states 
you just use positive feedback like this. You feed back some of the uh, output voltage and uh, it, it just looks at the voltage. It doesn't take any current. These inputs don't pull them in any so it won't affect the actual output just the input and so you can power stuff exactly the same and whatnot. But in uh, any case hopefully that all made sense. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.